Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm just going to give you this video to show you sort of what uh, what has been going on with the wire map. I had a few new models that I've been rendering, um, and I'm just going to share those with you. I also have one model that was rendered by this guy, or that was built by this guy uh, who lives over in Spain, and he saw this video on YouTube. Uh, at any rate, um, I will render that one also, and uh, just show you guys the possibilities of the wire map, and its development process and where it's going. So this is basically the sphere program from before. Um, this time, however, it's painted red with a yellow interior. Now the interior of this, when I say the interior, I mean anything that's not on, on or near the surface. I don't mean the interior of one axis. Um, the way I did this I, is I painted a red globe in the wire map, and then according to how close to the center of the globe was, I added a green value. Now red and green make yellow. So that's why the closer it is to the center, the more green value it has. So the closer it is to the center, the more yellow it looks. Of course, you can do this with any color card combination. You can also do it with, uh, with color in the inside, and then it sort of recedes into nothingness. But that is not so well defined, so I decided against that. Um, but So those two colors are sort of the, the colors that make the most vivid picture. This is an orbit. Uh, and here you can see the light just the globe just sort of floats left and right and left and right but from when you look at it from above or from below or from the side you'll see that it's uh it's actually orbiting in a circle it, it so um this is an actual orbit in space and as always it's moving pretty sleekly around and here you'll see uh a globe falling with respect to gravity. It has acceleration of I think like 5 meters a second squared, I'm not really sure, but what I want to do is I want to map it to 9.8 meters per second squared so it falls at the rate of actual gravity and then have some real world physics involved so it can bounce around in there and then this is sort of the first step towards uh, towards mending the physical differences between the way digital 3D objects behave and analog 3D objects behave. And this is one of a globe floating around in space. It jumps around and it bounces off the walls. Um, And there's this guy over in Spain who uh, sort of came up with the same idea. And he emailed me this code. And it's the exact same concept. He didn't have a wire map to play with, so he didn't uh, know how fast or slow it should go. But as you can see, it just bounces up and down. And then when it hits its limit, it just switches its direction. It's a very cool thing. It moves around so slowly like that. This is another program that the guy from Spain wrote. Uh, from looking at his code, it looks like he's he's illuminating the lights according to how deep they are. The really bright white ones are up front, and he fades them in. My calibration tool happens to be very hard cuts, but it is very uh, elegant, slow moving. Okay. He also has a third sketch, um, which has green in the front and blue in the back, and I think red actually in the very, uh, so far front that it's actually off the wire map. Um, but once again, like his sliding scale white and black, it doesn't cut very strong, it just has a, um, just slowly recedes into blue.